Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of My Future Energy Career. My name is Jalen, and I will be interviewing today's STEM hero, Caitlin Heflin. Uh, welcome, Caitlin. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Thank you for joining us today. So Caitlin is currently going through a transitioning career, moving from energy to waste. And without further ado, I will pass it off to her and she can give us a little more information. Yes, thank you, Jalen. Um, hi, everyone. Nice to meet you guys. My name is Caitlin. I am a climate change communicator and an energy professional, and I have always educated people throughout my career. So if you're good at uh, talking to people, if you're a people person, you could have a career like me someday, perhaps. Um, I've been really persistent in pursuing a career that I care about, that I'm passionate about, um, and trying to make the world around me a better place. So up to this point, I've been part of the transition to renewable energy. We're fighting climate change. We're trying to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions in the atmosphere. Um, I'm currently interested in transitioning my career and that's kind of going to be a theme of today's um, slides is that there's no clear path, there's no straight path. Um, and sometimes your path wobbles and turns. And for me, I'm currently uh, transitioning my career from energy into waste. I want to study waste policy and see if we can um, make recycling more circular. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Caitlin. But we'll move on to a little bit about where you're from. Yeah, so uh, I am from South Texas, right on the border with Mexico, um, literally on the border. So we compete with the tip of Florida for the southernmost point in the United States. Um, I'm from a, a small town called McAllen. Down here, there's gorgeous sunsets, tons of palm trees, lots of birding, uh, and lots of tacos. We're very heavily influenced by the Mexican culture being so close to Mexico. After high school, I actually moved to Spain for a year as an exchange student and I learned Spanish there. I was um, immersed in the Spanish language and um, that's been something that I'll always value, a really special part of my life. Moving on, we'll go into some of your interests. My favorite, favorite, favorite pastime is listening to music. Music has always been a really big part of my life. Perhaps it is for you too and you already know that. That's awesome, music is so special. I play the drums, I have an electronic drum set and I really love it. I've never been in a band, but that's a goal of mine. So, you know, never give up on those dreams. As a kid, I played a lot of sports. I was always outside. I played volleyball, I played soccer. Um, I did swimming at one point, track. I uh, also raised sheep in an organization called 4-H. Raising sheep, you know, kids will raise sheep or they do cattle, pigs, goats, even rabbits. And it, it's an organization that teaches you the work that goes into the agriculture in industry, that goes into raising livestock. And you really learn to appreciate that entire industry. And if you do eat meat, you learn to appreciate the work that goes behind uh, where your food comes from. I also, one of my favorite pastimes is hosting trash pickups um, because, you know, I'm going into waste now. I'm transitioning my career and I really hate to see litter on the streets. So my friends and I like to pick up trash and hang out and listen to music and, you know, be out in the sunshine. Moving on, we'll go into your educational pathway. My first major was architecture at Texas A&M University, and I decided to change my major. I went into the environmental track of international studies. The environmental track of international studies combines um, environmental issues and how that affects international relations around the world. Um, I took classes like environmental economics and planet Earth, and I learned a lot about the environmental issues uh, the whole world is facing. Issues, really big, hairy, complex issues like climate change, and also complex issues like the loss of biodiversity. Um, here on the right, you see a picture of a cornfield. We call this monocropping, where farmers will plant one species, just one vegetable for miles and miles and miles, and there's nothing natural about that and that's um, creating some problems with biodiversity. Awesome yeah thanks again for uh, sharing but I, I wanted to ask about um, so you studied climate change and agriculture in college and I was just wondering what are the connections between those two fields and what type of effects is climate change having on agriculture? There's a lot of connection there. I've never worked in the agriculture industry but I do know that the more fossil fuels we burn, the more greenhouse gas emissions that we are emitting into the atmosphere, uh, the more heat we're trapping. The more heat we trap, 
the more crazy extreme weather events we're getting, whether that be really crazy freezing snaps or uh, more extreme wildfires, stronger hurricanes, uh, more frequent flooding events uh, or droughts, it depends on where you are, that's making it very difficult for the agriculture industry to, to grow their crops and to have, you know, to have consistency in, in the weather where they know they're going to be able to um, secure the harvest. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And moving on, we'll go into some things you had to learn to get here today. Yes. Um, there is no straight path. I can't say that enough. Some, um, some fields, there may be a more straight path. You have to take X, Y, Z exam. But if you're not in a field that has that, that's completely okay. You just have to uh, be persistent, find something you're passionate about and keep knocking at those doors of opportunity. So also something that helped me um, get to where I am today is being fluent in Spanish has really opened up some opportunities and um, allowed me to connect with so many more people. I really enjoyed um, how you're talking about how finding your passion is so crucial and uh, finding your career pathway. Important to say for any of those uh, interested in going into the environmental field, there will be no shortage of jobs in that department. Definitely. Yes, we will have many, many, many jobs in this field. Yes, <laughs> for years to come as well. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we'll move on to some more advice you can offer the students. Definitely. This is a little bit of advice mixed with a challenge. My advice to you all, well, first I'll say that the world is facing many environmental issues, many social issues. They're often very interconnected. We need passionate and smart people like you to use your brains and to use your creativity to, to tackle these problems. So find something you're interested in, whether that be music or history or mathematics, and don't be afraid to knock at those doors of opportunity. Don't be afraid to go for it and shoot your shot. Um, it never hurts to try um, knocking at doors of opportunity. It's not ever going to be a straight path, but the more persistent you are um, and the more you believe in yourself, you're going to find yourself loving what you do more and more. Here's my challenge for you all. Meat consumption takes a really big toll on the environment. And I know if you eat meat, like it's delicious. Trust me, I'm Texan. I know. <laughs> but try a meatless Monday and see, see if you can challenge yourself, maybe challenge your family members and say, hey, let's try this because it's um, going to help the environment. And my last piece of advice to you is to spend less time on your phone and your technology and more time in the great outdoors under the sun. Life is short and we want to enjoy our youth and our bodies while we can. Um, so get outside, go for a hike, go play basketball, you know, spend less time looking at your screens. Yeah, some great advice coming from our STEM hero today. And the question I wanted to ask you is some students out there may know that meat is bad for the environment, but don't particularly know why. And I was just wondering if you could go more in depth about that. Yeah, of course, that's a great question. So let's take beef as an example. Um, beef is the type of meat that's worst for the environment. And I'll do a little explaining as to why. For cattle, you have to use a lot of land to raise the cattle. You also have to feed the cattle. So that means you're going to raise a ton of corn that's also using a lot of land contributing to that biodiversity problem. We talked about the monocropping. You have to water the corn um, and then of course process it and make it into feed. So you're, you're also having to water the cattle, meaning give them something to drink. It's a lot of water usage. It's a lot of land usage. And then when you, it comes time to process the cattle, you're using a ton of energy in the slaughterhouses. You're also using a ton of energy to keep that meat cold while you are transporting it, whether flying it across the world or trucking it across the country. You're burning more fossil fuels to transport that heavy meat. And then of course, keeping it, keeping it cold. So from the time you're raising a cow to the time it shows up on your plate, it is a ton of energy that's put into that piece of meat that is really going unaccounted for because we are consuming meat at an extremely, extremely fast pace. So the less meat we, we eat, the less water we're using, the less land we're using, um, and the less energy we're using. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for going more in depth about that. And I really, I really enjoy how you included this here, just to keep uh, people mindful of where their food come from and uh, what kind of impacts that could have on our environment. And also that we can all do uh, small actions to help combat climate change. But yeah, yeah um, for our last section, uh, we'll go into a little Q&A. 
-hmm. And uh, that is, um, you mentioned that you were transitioning from the energy field to the waste field. And I was just wondering what made you want to make that transition and what kind of challenges are you facing from making that transition? I've always had an interest in waste. I remember working for um, an energy organization and one day after in what we called an all staff meeting, I had an announcement to make and I said hey everyone I'm going to do a presentation stay after the meeting if you want it was called proper waste sorting and why it matters the reason I've been interested in waste and I want to transition is I I don't see it getting as much attention as the renewable energy tr um, transition is getting we are well on our way in the renewable energy transition it is the future we don't really have another option at this point um, but waste is also another really hairy issue um, that is related to climate change you know the more um, we're using a lot of energy producing virgin materials, and that means materials that are coming from petroleum that are brand new. We really need to make our system more circular um, uh, to get recycling, you know, perfected and um, tackle pollution at the same time. So you mentioned a couple times about uh, transitioning to a circular economy. Mm -hmm. For students out there who don't or who aren't familiar with this term, um, how would you describe that? Yeah, um, so I'm hoping to study this. I will be going to graduate school to study waste policy and figure out how we can use policy to make our waste streams more circular. So I don't know if I have the perfect answer for you, but the way I see it is as we're using materials, you go to the store, you may buy strawberries or you buy a packet of ham, for example. It comes mostly in plastic. So we need to figure out how we can take all of these materials and um, make them truly recyclable, meaning we're not losing the quality of the material. Um, and those materials can go back to the beginning of what we call a supply chain, meaning the very first step in creating that material. We need to make it a circle. Right now it's a line where once we use that material, it's often ending up in our oceans and our environment. In the United States, we're often sending, a, often sending a lot of that material overseas and burdening other countries who don't have the infrastructure to process it. Right now it's linear, like I said, um, it also ends up in the landfill, a big mountain of, of trash underground. So we want to change that line and make it into a circle. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for going more in depth about that. I just want to give a big, big, big thank you to Caitlin for jumping on this webinar and sharing more about your career and educational pathway. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate your time and Thank you all for listening and it's been really fun. I also wanna give a big thank you to everyone viewing out there. If you want to see more of our STEM here interviews, you can go to peakstudents.org to view our full library or visit our uh, Vimeo or YouTube channel at the Energy Coalition.